All right, YouTube, welcome back to the channel. It's Donovan the Yard Barber. I know I haven't put any content up in a while, and for that I apologize. Just spring, you know, the spring rush, grass starts growing, things start happening. Plus I wanted to go turkey, turkey hunting in April, and then, you know, dealing with the kids and all their activities and whatnot. Just not a lot of time for to create any content. But today I had to bring my trailer home to get it all cleaned out, get some junk out of it, and I was like, you know what? While I have my gear and stuff laid out, this is a good time to answer some of the questions that I get in the comments. People want to see the equipment that I use, Instagram and on and YouTube. I, I feel like I get that pretty often. So I'll show you guys what I got. I also thought it was a good chance for me to document where my business has come. I think this is my fourth or maybe my fifth season as an LLC. Started out with a 21-inch Troy built. Toss it in the bed of my pickup truck and then gradually got a trailer then got a bigger mower then got a zero turn and all that stuff so i wish i would have done this sooner to really document where everything's gone but um this is where we're at and i got some new gear that i got but i don't want to put that in this video i'm going to make some more videos later anyways let me get this stuff turned around and i'll go ahead and show you guys my setup all right so first up here we have the uh, toro grandstand i believe this is like a 2016 so I picked this machine up used. I think it had about 730 hours on it. I don't know the exact hours on it right now. I could I could look up there in a second and tell you. But this has been this has been the best thing. This has been an awesome machine. It's been very reliable. The cut quality, once you get the deck pitch right, you get the tires inflated like they're supposed to be. And I use the Ballard Inc. Uh, high rises on here. Pretty much year round I use the high rises. I might throw the uh, rippers on every now and then. Shout out to Ballard Inc. They make quality products. So, you know, I'm not sponsored by them and they didn't you know, they didn't tell me to say that or anything, but Ballard Inc. makes good good products. So stop by their website if you have anything you need, any parts or blades or anything you need for your machines and just check them out. Um, I picked this thing up off of Marketplace too. This is a must, all right? So let's, let's back up for a second. My target market is uh, like quarter acre lots, quarter acre neighborhood lots. So the 48 inch mower comes in, you know, that's, that's the right size for those size lots. If your target market's half acres, one acre lots, I get some comments about, you know, using 61s and stuff like that. I, some of my some of my yards, they're exactly eight feet between between the neighbor's houses. So if you draw a line down the middle, I got four feet on either side, hence the 48 inch. Sometimes I wish it was a 52, but just the obstacles and things that I have to go around, this is very nimble. It gets the job done. I do have a couple of bigger lots that I wish I had a bigger machine on, but I think the 48 is kind of that sweet spot. Um, I might get a 52 later just so I can share blades between the uh, 36 and the 52 or 54 or whatever the next one is. But anyways, I got off topic. The uh, shoot block, got to have it. Keep grass out of your mulch beds. If you get up next to cars and stuff, they're parked in the street or in the driveway. You're not kicking rocks and grass and stuff all over them. So grandstand 48 inch money next up i got this uh this is the skag 36 uh sw it's on there this is the hydraulic 36 inch walk behind this thing is a monster um you saw some of my other video or one of my earlier videos i was using the ferris fw15 great machine but dealer support is really important i'm gonna get look i'm gonna get all like i said this is unscripted so i'm all over the place here Dealer support is one thing, all right? That that Ferris, I was just having a hard time. The closest dealer was a it was a hundred mile round trip, so you know if I if I had any warranty issues or anything like that, it was really tough to get things done, get things taken care of in a timely in a timely fashion. So I had to move on from that. Great machine, I have nothing bad to say about that. But right now we're talking about the Skag. This thing is an absolute monster. I'm pretty sure the the horsepower it, on these is probably you know between these two machines here is probably the same. And this has two blades on it. Man, you could hog through things. I love this machine. I can't say enough about it. I'm running the Ballard Inc. Gold Series on it right now just to kind of test them out. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, the Gold Series blades, they're better than the Rippers, but 
but they're not better than them high rise. I mean, them high rises or something else. So I might put high rises on here. The only reason I don't have high rises on here is because I don't have a shoot block on this one. And uh, the rippers don't throw grass as far. That's why I like the rippers or the razors. They don't throw the grass as far. The high rises, man, they'll shoot grass. You know, you'll paint the side of a house if you don't have a shoot block on it. So that's why I got the mulchers on here. But yeah, this thing's been this thing's been awesome. I think I got it with 70 hours. It's got about 110 hours on it. No problems, no issues. Love this machine. Can't say enough about it. I might do a whole video just on that. The Billy Goat. You guys have seen the Billy Goat. Uh, this little thing here. This is the ES250. Blow off sidewalks and driveways and decks and whatnot with it. Um, and it also doubles as like a shred, like a leaf vacuum in the in the fall and in the spring. But I don't really use that that often. But sometimes I carry it with me, especially in like the summertime. Um, I might do a whole video, a whole series, just on electric stuff. I'm, I've always been intrigued by the electric power tools. This is the 60 volt Toro. This is the 22 inch recycler. So this, the cut quality out of this thing is actually pretty good. There's no side discharge, but it mulches and it bags. And you hit that little switch back there. Flip this little switch here, just like that. Pretty simple. Um, I have a, I have a route. It's just a, it's, it's probably like five little townhouses in a community that I take care of and I call it the green route. So in the summer when things get really hot outside, I use my battery powered equipment. I have the uh, Echo 58 volt trimmer at the 58 volt blower. And then I have this thing. And um, I can get started on that yard, on those yards at like seven in the morning, knock them out real quick, nice and quiet, stealth mode. They come out, their yards are nice and cleaned up, they're happy. And then that's five, six properties that are taken care of before you know the noise if you guys have noise rules in your area noise ordinances in your area sometimes it's 7 30 sometimes it's 8 but either way i'm knocked out eight o'clock and i can move on to some bigger properties so i'm gonna do i'm gonna do a couple of videos some comparisons between some other electric mowers um and electric's not for everybody i'm not trying to say you know go green or you know anything like that that's not what i'm about here but just using tools that work for you know for your setup so this is what I have basically with this machine it's light enough I fold the handle down I can pick it up and keep it in the bed of my truck it stays out of the way when I when I slip in onto the green route I don't have to drag this whole trailer around I just take my pickup truck get a couple of yards knocked out go grab my trailer and then finish up the rest cone I don't know if your insurance company makes you have one of these two or three of these or something like that but make sure you got your cone out this here the BR 600 by steel um, this machine is probably nine years old. So when I started the business, I just had this. So it's what I've been using day to day, just blowing off driveways, sidewalks, maybe some light, you know, cleanups in the yards and whatnot. The 600 is perfect. It's not too heavy and it makes the right amount of power and the nozzle shape. I might do a whole blower series later too. The nozzle shape is just right to kind of, you know, steer and everything where you need it. Some of the bigger blowers have the big tube and you're just blowing grass wherever, this is, you can be nice and controlled with it and get things cleaned out. So the BR600, I got nothing bad to say about it. This is a solid, solid backpack blower. Um, I haven't done anything to it. It starts on the first pull every time. I make sure that you know I use good, good fuel in it and stuff like that. So um, yeah, and I'm not a steel versus echo guy. Basically, you know, it comes down to dealer support, what dealer you have in your area. I have a steel dealer, I have an echo dealer. The Echo Dealer is a little bit of a drive. Well, not like not a drive. It's like eight miles. So about eight miles we're talking about. And uh, they always treat me nice. The customer service is good. Warranty repairs like that. So I just go there. Um, but nothing to say, not to say anything bad about the steel. The steel was pretty good too. A trimmer rack. This keeps your trimmers, you know, this keeps your trimmers in tip top shape. And then it's nice being, you know, being a solo guy. I don't have to go dig, you know, dig around for the tools. Everything's kind of got a home in here. So you know, once I get done mowing or whatever, just walk in here and grab the trimmer that I need. So I've got two trimmers here. So I've got the, this is the uh, SRM225 and I've got the uh, SRM 2320T. This is like their X series or their commercial trimmer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, both of these trimmers, I mean, they're exactly the same. They, you know, the, they're, they're the same, the same trimmer as far as the head unit goes exact same trimmer um where it comes the difference between them is going to be down in the uh the torque head down there the 2320t is going to give you more torque the srm 225 is going to give you like a higher speed so i use them both i mean it really just depends um if i've got to do a lot of trimming and this thick tall stuff i'll grab this 2320t here and um just blast right through it 
And then if it's like, if I got to flat top some areas, like, you know, even things out, make them look real nice, trim around buildings and edge up and stuff like that, then this one, I prefer this one. I think the higher RPMs, just get this thing, get this thing going. You'll notice too, some people ask me about this sometimes. I don't have, I don't run the guards on these. Um, that's just my personal preference. I'm not going to say that it's better or worse to not run the guards. I don't run the guards because if I'm doing edging, I like my string to come out a little bit longer than 16 inches. So that's just me. Um, I've noticed too that I've, look, I blast, I had a guard on a trimmer and still blasted a window out of a car. So, um, luckily it was my personal vehicle and not a customer's cause that would have been, uh, that would have been tough. But, um, yeah, that's that. And then, uh, keep my string down, my string trimmer line down here. This is the, uh, Oregon Magnum, uh, Gator line. So this is the, uh, 0 0.095 is what I run. Um, some people like to run the skinnier stuff, but this is what I like to run. And you probably won't show up too good on camera, but there's a metal wire in here, so stuff lasts pretty good. But you got to be careful, man. That thing will, that thing will launch. It will rocket launch anything it hits. So mulch, sticks, um, little rocks and pebbles and stuff. So just be careful. Pay attention to what way your your trimmer head's spinning and where you're kicking things, and just you know, pay attention. And then I just keep these little uh, diagonal cutters hanging up over here. Snip them. That's that. Um, let's see what else we got over here. Then I did a whole little short video on the RB60 spreader. Um, having a nice spreader is a, is, is, is a must. So I'm going to get something a little bit bigger and nicer, but for now, that's that. And then I keep my hand tools on this door. I have, this has three doors. So I have the big door in the back and then have doors on either side. This one stayed. This is curbside. Or I'm sorry. This is usually street side. I keep this door closed and locked. But if I just need to, you know, if I just need to rake something or grab a tool real quick and I don't need to go, you know, I don't need to pull out a mower or anything, I can always unlock this door, flip it open, grab the tool that I need and, and get the job done. Same thing with this side. This is usually on the curb side. I want to put a mounted blower rack over here so that I can just open this up, grab a blower and get going. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think. That's pretty much everything I got in the bed of my truck. I keep a scoop shovel in there. Um, I keep a mulch rake or a mulch fork. I got a couple of gas cans down here. That one keeps the, uh, that's the straight gas. And then that one is the uh, two stroke gas. Two and a half gallons. I, I don't really ever have to use that. I take the machines to the pump. So if, when they get once a week or every other week or so, I just take them to the pump and fill them up. But that's for like emergency cases or just a top off in between in between weeks or something like that. Uh, oh, I didn't even mention, this is the uh, PAS. So this is the SRM225, but you can put attachments on here. Just because of the way it fits into the rack, I keep that um, I keep that edger on there. But I mostly use this for like the hedge trimmer. And uh, but the hedge trimmer won't sit in the rack like that. You can I also have a weed eater attachment, so it could be a backup for that as well. Um, but that thing's like the, that's like the Shaolin Ninja Sword right there. If you're doing hedges or anything, it, it comes in it comes in handy. So yeah, anyways, that's. I mean, that's all my tools. Um, can't really think of anything else. Something else I forgot, it's probably an important part of a setup video, is to show you how everything fits in here. This is a 7x16 trailer, by the way. Um, I started with a, well, the bed of my pickup truck, then I went to a 5x10. Um, the 5x10 got tight real quick, and then now that I got this 7x16, I like look for stuff to put in here. But anyways... That uh, 22 inch push mower doesn't normally go in here, but I just put it in here for, you know, whatever. Um, these two mowers easily fit. That usually rides up there. I have a strap for it that ties it back so it doesn't like swing around too much. And then uh, that stuff up there in the front, I don't really use that much. Um, and then I can also take things out of the side if I need to. So this is pretty much how it all fits in here. You see I have enough space for, for more stuff. Uh, that, that mower and then... Uh, that orange, that little orange blower right there, I don't usually ride back here, but I got him back here today. And then I've got a little bit more, so we probably say another like three feet back here if I wanted to put something else, turn something sideways or something like that. But all right, so that's my equipment. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave me a comment. I really try hard to make sure that I answer all the comments, reply to all the comments, uh, Instagram, on YouTube as well. Um, I do have a couple of videos coming up. I'm going to do like an electric 
series because I get some comments about electric equipment and uh, I'm kind of intrigued by it too. There's some pros and some cons to the electric equipment and I think it's worth having a discussion about. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for today. So I'm going to wrap this video up. Please leave me a, a like, a comment, subscribe if you'd like to. All right. I'm not going to tell you to hit the bell for notifications because there's no reason to do that. I only make a video maybe like once a month. I'm going to try to get them out faster for you guys. But if you made it this far, I really appreciate it. You guys have a good day.